governance for big, general AI systems cannot come from top to bottom. AI governance should not be opaque. It should be based on decisions that have been voted by the people. For the past two years, we have built tools for proving and rewarding volunteer effort as volunteers ourselves. We used decentralized technologies like blockchain, peer-to-peer -peer communication, decentralized storage to build and focus on governance and voting tools, tools for proving and challenging effort claims, and means for ethically rewarding those who volunteer their efforts through a system of non-tradable points or tokens or laurels. And as we expected, when you create a system from first principles, it can be applied to many domains. And today, our tools are well suited for ensuring a democratic governance for AI. Our system is flexible enough today to allow people themselves to discover and govern the democratic features of AI. We have proposed this system to OpenAI on the 17th of June 2023, and we described it in our application. We are ready to offer this system as volunteer effort, as a gift. And you can read our OpenAI application at the link provided in the video description. We also sent them a link to a video demonstration of the voting system, and you will also see this video demo at the end of this presentation. The system that we are proposing allows for fast decision-making for novel proposals, but also the ability to immediately change the enforcing of the decision once voters have changed their mind, as more information comes to light. In time, the system gains stability and decisions are harder, but never impossible to overturn. The voting and judging process never stops. This ensures that AI governance has eternal relevance, is provable as intent, process and realization, is comprehensive to both the humans and the AI, is flexible, composable, upgradable, is robust and scalable, is inclusive, and is innovative. AI itself can be used to help policy design and enforcement. Eternal relevance. Policies must stand the test of time, and we ensure that by using timeless concepts that are clearly defined. We propose scene sets from WordNet with GPT embeddings. Also, voting must not be time-boxed. We use continuous voting or conviction voting. We have proposed our own algorithm for n-dimensional continuous voting. And votes are weighted by expertise, skill, experience in the domain of the question or proposal. Voting can also follow a liquid democracy format with delegated voting. AI governance must be provable in order to deserve people's trust. AI can be used to determine intent, but only if it is based on valid data. This is why it is crucial to be able to prove votes. And right now, the state-of-the-art tech for proving digital actions is blockchain tech, along with various cryptographic protocols that allow votes to be secret at least during an initial critical voting period. One or more identity protocols can be used, and the more legally binding, for example, a government-issued digital ID, the more trust people can have in the system. The system should be able to provide mathematical proofs of the process, and the AI training process and final outcome must also be provable to demonstrate 
that the governor's decisions have indeed been applied correctly. Transparency of the entire process is also provable. The comprehensiveness of the system is ensured by using synsets and concepts as basis. This will allow fine-grained governance and exact translations of the policies in any language. The user interface allows anyone to understand how to participate to governance and the web UI could be included inside ChatGPT itself. We also cover multiple ways to embed governance into the AI, through vector embeddings and through a modified transformer model. Details later in this video. The modified transformer model that we propose is as trainable as any other AI components, and trained policies can also be composed. The governance apparatus itself will have AIs that determine intent, incongruencies, and make summaries of data. And these specialized AI can have common pre-trained components. As you will see in the demo at the end of this presentation, the governance system is simple yet flexible. Every system parameter can be governed and every system component can be upgraded. System upgrades are also governed. The governance system that we are proposing is decentralized, cannot be controlled by one entity, and can be verified by any person. It is transparent, scalable by sidechains, and we have our own technology for advanced, elastic scalability under development. Our governance system is transparent, and transparency determines responsibility of actions. Through our identity layer, we ensure that votes are representative of the will of the people. And the highest standard, the government-issued digital identities, also ensure legitimacy of governance decisions at a national or local level. Minorities are treated with respect, and each policy can have a weighted vote depending on skill, expertise, experience, and target audience. We also envision children becoming part of the governance process as early as possible. This governance process can be brought as a ChatGPT plugin at the people's fingertips. The plugin will identify the concepts that need to be governed and will help people compose the governance proposals and also the various options that a governance proposal has in the ChatGPT interface. And these will be voted on in our blockchain-based n-dimensional conviction voting process. And then the momentary decision resulted from governance is applied in the transformer model. The governance proposal outcomes are introduced in the model training and it can be done for example through the feedback mechanism where humans judge if the proposal was applied correctly on AI answers. Further we propose the transformer model to have an internal dialogue component where it thinks about its answer based on the governance policies and then applies the appropriate policies for that user prompt. This is where the internal dialogue can be inserted in the transformer model. And this is an expanded view. This middle section here is the internal dialogue. And on the left here, we have the user input and the processing of the user input. The concepts and words from the prompt are extracted and we can search all the existing policies concerning those concepts. If we find none, then the process can just continue as normal. But if we do find policies, the AI has an internal dialogue here regarding both the user prompt and the policies that apply to the concepts, and it continues the transformer process 
after taking everything into account. And now the demo video for the voting process. A system for good governance allows for fast decision-making for novel proposals, but also the ability to immediately change the enforcing of the decision once voters have changed their mind. As more information comes to light, as opinions clarify and solidify, the system gains stability and decisions are harder but never impossible to overturn. The voting and judging process never stops. This is the kind of system that I will show you today. A system that can be used for artificial intelligence governance. This is a list of eight proposals that live in a smart contract on a blockchain. These proposals govern how the system itself works. So let's add a new proposal for AI governance. And the proposal title is Should everyone interested be given the right to vote for every governance proposal? This is the title of the proposal. And next we need to add a discussion URL. This is where voters can engage in how to create the various answers to this question. Next, we need to clarify our question. I already ran the question through an editor that uses WordNet and selected the appropriate word definitions. We can see that the words everyone and proposal have the synset ID included in this text. So, for example, for the word proposal, we have synset ID 3. So, this means we chose the third WordNet sense for the concept proposal. And this is the WordNet page for proposal. You can see the third sense is the act of making a proposal. This is the appropriate meaning for the question that we are asking. And now we can also add a summary for the question. And we can say that this proposal represents the voter view regarding the maximum possible inclusivity. And this means everyone, which is any human who wants to vote regardless of age or other characteristics. Documentation on this proposal can also be stored in a system that can provide a unique identifier based on the content of the proposal, like a decentralized storage mechanism such as the IPFS. Now, we also need to give an organizer address. This is our account ID because we need to have some stake in the matter. So we have a system of points or tokens that measure the effort that we have done. And registering a governance proposal means giving some of those points because they will be awarded to the winning option. Because this is a continuous voting process, the winning option can change in time. So those points can be retracted and given to the new winning option and so on. So this is how the organizer ID looks. And we also need to provide the point type. In this case, we will use a mite, which is a generic type of token. But this is a multi-denomination point or token system. So for each domain and subdomain, we can define a type of point. For example, a proposal for the domain of education can be made using education points. Then only those with education points can vote. The system also has an exchange mechanism between types of points based on coefficients that are governed themselves and open to be voted on. 
The system can, for example, allow or disallow a voter to exchange points of type legal or of type engineering for points of type education. And this allows for fine-grained permissions and weighted voting. And you can see here a ratio, which is usually around 1.5 as a default. But this can be configured for each proposal. So let's see what this ratio is. If you look at this graph, you see the X and Y axis and three slopes. The middle slope is just the middle line, but the other two, this one and this one, are determined by the ratio that we mentioned, which is X over Y. Now, this is a b-dimensional case where we only compare two options, X and Y. Think of it like a question with a yes and no answer. Yes is the x-axis and no is the y-axis. And we can see that here, initially, the x-option won. At this point, all the votes were for the x-option. If the current result between the x and y options is in area 1, then X wins. If it is in area 2, then Y wins. Areas 3 and 4 do not have consequences in changing the outcome. So, at this point in time, X won, but at this point in time, option Y was the winning option. Because votes for the Y option started to come in. And finally, here, option X is the winning option again. And this can go indefinitely, but it becomes harder and harder to change the result unless previous voters change their mind. And this slope, the X and Y ratio, is flexible. And this is just in two dimensions. We can add as many dimensions as we need, which means as many options as we need for one proposal. Each of these axes represent one different option. Now back to our proposal and we'll set here the amount of points to 10,000. And now we can go here and register the proposal. The proposal was registered and now we can go to the first page and we see our proposal in the list. And now we can click on it. We see the title, our discussion URL, our definition and summary. Currently, we only have two options registered on this proposal, which are system generated. The first one is status quo, which means the outcome of this proposal should be the current status quo. Nothing should be changed. The second system generated option is unenforceable. And this happens if the proposal is unenforceable for reasons including but not limited to being unclear, too broad, maybe it was already covered by previous proposals, or it's illegal, etc. So at this point, nobody has voted yet. So each proposal has a weight of zero. So let's add our first option, which can be a simple yes. Any human should be able to vote on any AI governance proposal, regardless of age or other characteristics. Again, we need to set a beneficiary account. Now, this account will stake some points to be able to register this option. And the points will go to the winning option. This is the amount of points that we will stake, 10,000. And this counts as a weighted vote for this option. And we will set zero arbitration points. 
this being the special type of points awarded for arbitration effort that have a bigger weight in the system. And now we will add this option that also casts a vote. The proposal, the options, are registered on a blockchain that I am running locally. This is for the purpose of this demo. And we can see the receipts from these transactions for registering the proposal and options here, along with the transaction hash for that transaction. And now if we scroll, we can see that our option has already appeared in the graph. Let's add another option with no. Voting on AI governance proposals should have a set of requirements that might differ for each proposal and target audience. There should be no absolute inclusivity. We will also stake on this 10,000 points. We propose and vote. And the option has appeared and it is this one. So we have a color-coded system for each access. We can see these two options are the system options and then this is the yes option, the no option. And we will add one more option here. Yes with proxy delegated voting. Any human can vote and or they can delegate their vote to a specialist. For example, children to their legal guardians. And our last option has appeared, which is here in blue. And we can see the yes option, the no option, and the yes with proxy or delegated voting. And we can vote on any one of these options. Let's cast an additional vote for the yes option for just 5,000. And now we can see here that our yes option has won. This inner circle here is the threshold at which the option yes has won. And our current number of aggregated votes is 25,000 points. So these numbers are the accumulated weight of each option from all the votes. 25,000 for option yes and 10,000 for no and yes with delegated voting. And there's also a threshold here which is a dashed line and the value is 38,276. This is the threshold at which another winner will be determined. So for example, if we go uh, and vote on the last option and we will set 40,000 points, we should see that the last option becomes the winner. And indeed, now we have a second winner, which is this uh, represented by the circle of the same color as option five, the last option. Related to the essence of this very question, who should vote and how do you ensure trustworthiness in the governance system? We also have support for government issued digital identities. And for this prototype, we present you with a demo of how you can register a blockchain account with the EID from the Estonian government. Now for the provable identity demo.
This is a DAP for our wallet registry. And we can connect to our Estonian ID card from here. And I have mine plugged in. So the DAP connects to it and gets the public key from the card. And I will copy these public key values in the registration function. Now let's run the registration transaction. The transaction has finished and now we have another transaction to finalize the registration. What we have done is register our current address with our Estonian ID card. So there is a link between my identity and this Mythos address that I am using right now. And I can add and remove addresses. I can renew and replace my card details and more. Vox Populi, Vox AI.